Good morning, my dear students. Today we are going to learn a new poem, "The Road" by Eunice D'Souza. Okay. Now, when I say about Eunice D'Souza, I could say that she is of a mixed origin. She had a Finnish mother and a Portuguese grandmother and Italian grandfather, and of course, she lived in India. and uh, she can be called as an uh, english language poet who was of an indian origin and she had published different volumes especially four volumes of poems and two novellas and published different anthologies of which the last and the final the a necklace of souls i, I mean a necklace of skulls is of the most important one and this particular poem that is the road is written in the necklace of skulls okay so and this particular anthology of the poem is published in 2009 and you can see that most of her works was translated into portuguese italian finnish etc okay in this book a necklace of skulls she says that she has always loved to write lyrical poems which are soft sensuous and passionate lines and also she touches upon the most emotive sense of a human soul and anybody who can read her poems can understand that her poems are very uh, specific on understanding the different emotions of a human mind and you can say that she touches upon the psychological level of understanding a human soul and uh, it is a surprising admission from someone who otherwise alludes her poem as a soul old person verse because anybody who reads it will love the poem as much so we are going to the poem itself Now here we have the different works of Eunice de Sousa that is Fix Women in Dutch Painting Ways of Belonging Selected and New Poems A Skull of a Necklace of Skulls Learn from the Almond Leaf all these are published poems okay Now going to the novellas you can see that her novellas are Danger Lock which was published in 2001 Dave and Simran a novel which was published in 2003 Now uh, when you see about the writings of Disusa you can see that Disusa she always uh, concerns about the plight of the Indian women and she doesn't take into consideration the different social context in which these women are laid because if she even if she is a maid even if she is a housewife even if she is a daily wager or even if she is of a, a highly uh, i mean highly acclaimed class of group of people yet she tries to sustain the concern of plight in almost all of her poems her poems constantly explore the loss of alienation and isolation which accompanies womanhood okay now going to the poem here you can read the road as we came out of the church into the sunlight a row of small girls in first communion dresses i felt the occasion demanded lofty thoughts so here the poet is saying that she along with somebody else had come out of the church into the bright sunlight and it was a very sunny day and here she saw a small group of peep i mean small group of girls they were going in a row neatly in the first communion dresses white dresses okay and she then understood that it was a certain occasion i felt the occasion demanded lofty thoughts it was an occasion which demanded a religious or pious thought i remember only my grandmother smiling at me 
They said, now she wears a lipstick, now she is a Bombay girl. They said, your mother is lonely, nobody said even the young must sleep. Just read through this poem first and we can go into the description later. In school, I clutched Sister Flora's skirt and cried for my mother who taught across the road. Sister Flora is dead. The school is still standing. I am still learning to cross the road. So that is a very short poem and it's a very interesting one also. So I hope you understood the first paragraph. Now going to the second paragraph. See the poet is taken into a certain religious or pious thought when she saw or witnessed a row of beautifully uh, dressed girls going in white and suddenly she went to a certain incident in her life and that incident may be the death of her mother and on that particular day also she had worn this particular communion dress because that was the only dress she had I remember only my grandmother smiling at me I remember that I had dressed like this on some particular occasion and on that day I remember how my grandmother had looked at me very carefully very caringly and very soothingly they said now she wears a lipstick now she is a Bombay girl. So that is the third paragraph. Okay. They said. Who said? Somebody said. The society said. The society said. Now she wears a lipstick. Who wears the lipstick? The girl. The poet wears a lipstick. Now she is a Bombay girl. She is a Bombay girl. They said. Your mother is lonely. Nobody said even the young must live so she they said your mother is lonely they said that your mother may be lonely your mother may be lonely in death and nobody said that the young must leave that means they said the society said that she wears lipstick usually in those days these contextual representations of having worn a particular color of lipstick or having the talk of the town being a Bombay girl means that the girl himself had or the girl herself had turned into a prostitute. Okay, so maybe the mother of this particular girl was also a prostitute and now she had taken the, I mean, she taken the job of a prostitute. She is alone there. She is alone there. She is stressfully and making love and sex with others in order to survive this horrible world because she is a person who is all alone. They said your mother is lonely. They all said you should have to die because your mother has gone. Your mother has died and gone and therefore you should have to also go with her. Nobody said even the young must live. Nobody said that you are in your youth and therefore you should have to live. Now towards the end. In school I clutched sister Flora's skirt. So here uh, the transition begins that is in the first paragraph the poet says about how she witnesses the scene of these girls going in a row marching and in the second paragraph she tells about how she has gone into the memories of her mother and in the third paragraph she represents the present day situation in which she is living the life of a prostitute and in the fourth paragraph she again goes back into her memories so here she tells about her school time memories in which in school I clutched sister Flora's skirt I was a very shy person 
and therefore i used to clutch i used to hang behind sister flora's skirt and cried for my mother who taught across the road and i used to always cry for my mother because i missed her so much and she has gone or crossed the road to heaven or she has crossed the do- uh, road of death okay sister flora is dead now that sister flora is also dead the school is still standing the school still stands there the sister flora whom i had known before has gone off and i am still learning to cross the road and i am still learning to survive i am still learning to live in order to uh, conquer earth or conquer death or to cross the road of death in order to go along with my mother so that is a very simple poem so i would like you to uh, go into a detailed critical appreciation i will be sending this particular powerpoint also to you so thank you thank you so much